Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be redrawing a picture that is almost 10 years old. So I actually started drawing in 2010. I may have started drawing in late 2009, but I can't totally remember. It was either late 2009 or early 2010. So since we are going into 2020, I thought it'd be fun to redraw a picture that I drew in 2010. So here's the picture I'll be redrawing. I was 14 when I drew this picture. And let's just take a minute to look at this picture and appreciate it. Warning, this next part of the video is gonna contain high levels of sarcasm. <laughs> As we can see, her face just has so much emotion. You can totally tell what she's thinking and she doesn't look like she's just standing there smiling. <laughs> also, look at these wrinkles. You can really tell I knew what I was doing when it came to the wrinkles. <laughs> also, she has a gap between her rib cage and her armpit, which is totally anatomically correct. <laughs> also, you can tell by the shading that I spent a lot of time trying to make it super smooth. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this picture is really old. I remember liking it when I drew it, and today I'm redrawing it, so let's get started. So for this picture, I was thinking about changing the character's position and drawing her in a different view. I decided to kind of keep the same position because I thought it'd be a better comparison between the old picture and this new picture, and so I decided to keep the same simple three-quarter kind of view. And here I was thinking about adding a pattern to the scarf. So I was kind of sketching out some different ideas. So I grabbed my very rough sketch of the character in three quarter view and started to try to clean it up a little bit more. I wanted her head to be more tilted upwards. In the original piece, she's kind of looking very straight on it. She's not really looking up at all. So I wanted to make sure to kind of tilt her head up so it's looking up at the sky. And I also have her irises going up. I wanted it to look like she was looking at all of the falling snow. And for this drawing, I'm trying to draw it with the emotion that I wanted the first picture to have. And so for the first picture, I wanted the girl to look very happy about all of the falling snow snow uh, but I wasn't sure how to go about doing that because I wasn't very good at drawing different facial expressions so she kind of just looks like she's just kind of standing there in the snow um, but for this girl I wanted her to look very enthusiastic and happy about all of the falling snow so I was really trying to capture that so after doing my rough sketch, I am moving on to my clean sketch. And for quite a while, I keep the sketch on my canvas kind of tiny. Um, it is just going to be a shot of like her upper bust and shoulder and head area. Uh, but I wanted to keep it kind of small because then I can kind of sketch everything out and I don't feel limited to the confines of the canvas. Sometimes I find when I enlarge my picture too early, I feel kind of squished in the canvas. And so I want to give myself room to kind of freely draw things and move things around if needed. I kind of felt a lot of pressure while working on this picture because it's kind of showing how much I've improved in 10 years. So it's like, look at this picture. This is all of my work over the past 10 years and how I have improved, <laughs> which isn't really like the case. Like there are some pictures that are better and some pictures that are not as good. And like, it's kind of a fluctuation, uh, but I felt a lot of pressure with this picture to make it look really nice uh, because it's kind of showing my work over the last 10 years. <laughs> uh, so I was being very, very nitpicky. I was adjusting things so much and trying to get things to look how I like them. I spent a really long time <laughs> nitpicking the piece. And there was multiple times I wanted to restart, but I was just like, just calm down. It's not a big deal. Just keep working on it. Let it go through its ugly phase and all that stuff. I kept wanting to jump ship too early. <laughs> um, but I kept pushing through and just trying to work with the piece and not get too overwhelmed. <laughs> Also, I changed how her scarf is wrapped in the old one. It's just kind of wrapped around her shoulder, but I drew it in the way that it's like wrapped in a loop and then you shove some of the scarf through the loop and then you kind of pull it tight a little bit. Um, I thought that would look kind of cute. I also added a pom-pom to her hat. I don't know, I just really wanted to add a pom-pom because I thought it would be so cute. <laughs> 
So after doing the cleanup sketch of my rough sketch, I actually did another cleanup sketch. I decided not to show that because I thought it'd be kind of boring. Um, so we're skipping ahead a little bit. At first I wasn't going to show her bust area, uh, but then I noticed in the old picture it does kind of show like her bust, it's not just her shoulders. So I added in the rest of her bust and the rest of her arms and added all that in. And originally I had her arms kind of going out like she's excited, but it just kind of kept making her upper body look a little weird. So I decided to move her arms back in. So after finishing all my sketching, I move on to the line art. And for my line art, I am using the rough pencil tool I'll usually use the G pen, but sometimes I use the rough pencil tool if I want my line art to look a little softer. And for this picture, I wanted to have a slightly softer feel, so I used the rough pencil tool. It's a very slight difference, um, but I feel like it kind of helps things look a little softer. Overall, the line art went really smoothly. Like I mentioned, I was really nitpicky with this piece and I kept delaying moving on to the line art and I was staying in the sketching phase for a really long time. Uh, but I decided to just go into the line art and I felt like the piece improved a lot when I went into the line art because sometimes I just don't notice little things that I want to change in the sketching phase but I'll notice them when I'm doing the line art because I'm paying really close attention to all the different little details and stuff and so I'm really happy I went on to the line art phase and didn't just stay in the sketching phase <laughs> because I became a lot happier with the piece uh, once I finished the line art. One thing that did change a lot from the original piece to this piece is her hair. I did change up her hairstyle a little bit. Um, in the original, she had her bangs kind of tucked under her hair, uh, but I decided to give her kind of short bangs uh, just because I thought it'd be kind of cute. I also changed up the design of the hat quite a bit. I had it have different sections that kind of go in and poof out. I was looking at different pictures of hats and trying to mimic real life hats a little bit. And for the pom pom I didn't use liner, I am just using a textured brush because I wanted it to look really soft and fluffy and I thought that'd be kind of hard to do with line art so I decided to just use a textured brush. So after finishing the line art I filled in all the base colors and right now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for the background. I was thinking about changing up the background and using like a whole bunch of different colors. In the end I go with something that's pretty similar to the original background. I do use a little bit more color but not a ton more color. It's just a little bit more bluey and not so gray. So I'm having the lighting come slightly from above. The area is cloudy, so there's not a super strong direct light source. Um, so I'm trying to keep my shadows a little bit softer and not very harsh because the lighting's just kind of coming from everywhere because the cloud and the snow is kind of diffusing the light a little bit. Right now, I am working on the scarf and adding the shading to that. I had a lot of fun shading the scarf because I like shading wrinkles and there are a lot of wrinkles with scarfs. And so I had a lot of fun with that. I also wanted to try to keep the clothing from looking shiny. So I'm trying to keep all my shading on the clothing um, a little bit more muted and soft. And I'm trying to keep things from looking shiny. <laughs> now I'm moving on to her hair. I decided to move on to her hair early on in the process. Uh, because I figured her hair was one of the things that would take a little bit longer. This picture is a up-close shot, so I wanted to try to include a lot of different details. Because when I'm doing full body shots, everything is so small that once I put the details, you don't really see them. But since she is larger and we're seeing more of her, I wanted to try to include a lot of details like in her hair and in her clothing. Now I'm going in and I'm adding the highlights to the hair to make it look more shiny. I'm using a lighter brown and often I use Add Glow when I'm adding the highlights. I actually didn't this time. I do use Add Glow a little later on when adding all of the gradients. Uh, before these little streaks of hair, I don't use Add Glow. Next I'm moving on to adding more details to the hat and one thing I wanted to add to the hat was some texture. I noticed when I was looking at hats that you can often see the kind of knitted texture of the hat so I really wanted to add that. So I found this little brush online that almost creates kind of a fishnet sort of texture and it kind of looks like weaving thread a little bit. So I take that brush and I go in lines all along the hat 
and I try to make the lines follow the shape that the hat is going and curve in the same way of the hat. That way it doesn't look weird. <laughs> I do this all along the white part and then I do this all along the teal part. And then for the highlights, I go in with a chalk brush. I decide to use the chalk brush because it kind of splatters the colors. They're not all clumped together. They're all kind of these little itty bitty tiny dots. And I used that because I thought it'd make it look a little bit more textured and like the highlights were only appearing on some of the little lumpy parts. <laughs> I also add a texture to her sweater. For this one, I just use a texture from the Clip Studio Asset Library. I also add a texture to her scarf. I did think about using the same texture that I used for the hat and going in with the brush, uh, but this sounded like a lot of work because even just doing it on the hat took me a little bit. So I decided to use the drawing paper texture and this kind of looked like scarf-like texture. Uh, so that's what I went with. I also used another brush I found that looks kind of like a knitted texture and I went in with this brush where there was going to be more highlights and they look black right now but then I make them lighter and I also erase them uh, where it gets more towards the shadows and I did this to make the scarf look a little bit more knitted. Next, I'm adding the shading to her sweater. One thing that did really change about this picture from the previous one is the color I am using to add the shading. In the first picture, I just used gray. In this one, I am using a muted teal color. I decided to use teal. Usually I'll use kind of a blue or a purple, um, but I'm using teal to kind of keep everything cohesive. And since she's wearing teal and there's kind of teal all throughout the piece, I decided to shade the white with the teal. Also to blend out my shading, I used the finger on paper blending tool. It adds just a little bit more texture and it's not quite as smooth as the blending tool I usually use. So next I'm adding the shading to the face. I start by applying a layer of shadow and then I erase it towards the middle of her face. I find this helps give the face a little bit more dimension. I also change the shadow under the neck and I make it kind of soft and casting to the left. I also have the shadow cast a little bit over the scarf. Um, I felt like that shadow turned out nice. <laughs> I also add some blushing to her cheeks and her nose uh, because it's cold outside so your cheeks and nose are gonna get kind of red. I add a lot of fun shading the face. I like to make the shading really soft and kind of subtle. Next I'm working on her eyes. I add the white parts of the eyes and then lower the opacity just a little bit. I was thinking about having her eyes be this teal color. In the original they are blue, but I don't know. I kind of wanted to make them teal to kind of go with the rest of the picture. I do end up making them a little bit more blue later on though. I adjust the hue just a little bit to make them a little bit more blue. I wanted to include a lot of contrast in her eyes so that our eyes go directly to her eyes first and they're the first thing that we look at. So I include a lot of lights and a lot of darks. Next I'm kind of adding the finishing details of the picture. I decided to add kind of a rim light all around her of white because the clouds and the snow are kind of diffusing the light source. And so I'm making the light kind of come from all around her and it adds kind of this soft glow. I'm really happy I added this because I feel like it makes the picture look a little bit more ethereal and kind of magical. I also decided to add her breath. I thought this would make things feel a little bit more lively. And now I'm adding all of the snow. I used the splatter brush or something and I added a whole bunch of tiny white dots. I also add some larger dots and then I blur them out to make these look like snowflakes that are closer to us but the camera isn't focusing on those snowflakes. So here's the old picture from 2010 and here's the new picture. It is definitely kind of interesting seeing the pictures side by side and how things have changed over the years. One thing I find really funny though is that in the original picture there's this hair that's sticking out and I didn't even notice it. But in my new picture there's also this little hair that's sticking out. <laughs> I didn't notice it until I finished the pictures and I'm like, well wait, they both have these little hairs that are sticking out in the back. <laughs> So even after 10 years, there's some things I still do the same. <laughs> but yeah, I had so much fun redrawing this picture and revisiting my old art. And I hope you enjoyed getting to see my process of recreating one of my old pictures.
Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!